Hey y'all, this is the beginning of a new series where at the beginning of each month, I'm gonna talk about what seeds I am sowing. Sometimes those seeds are gonna be indoors, I'm gonna be sowing indoors like January and February, and sometimes those seeds I'm gonna be sowing directly outdoors. But I thought that this might be a good opportunity to show you guys what I'm doing each month instead of breaking it down into tons of little videos, just one video, talking about the specific seeds, why I'm sowing them at this time of the year, and what my expectations are for them. As always, make sure you hit that subscribe button and that notification bell so you know when my latest videos are up. Remember, every time you subscribe, every time you share this video, every time you leave me a comment, it shows YouTube that you wanna see more of my content and it allows me to grow my channel. So when I first started gardening, I felt the whole idea of sowing seeds inside seemed very intimidating. And I can see how a lot of people would feel like that as well. Once I finally took the leap, I realized it's actually fairly simple. It's really more about having all of the products you need set up and ready to go, a great location and a plan. Once you have that in um, under your belt and you proceed forward, it really is fairly easy. I do have some videos um, which will show you my seed setup and how I go about that. I don't buy expensive products for any of my indoor seed sowing. I am a home gardener. I'm not a giant production gardener, so I'm not sowing thousands of seeds at a time. I'm really just working off of my small little plot of land. Um, and so I'm really just kind of, my seed setup is smaller than most maybe YouTube gardeners or most professional gardeners. But I actually think that's great because I think it works well for the home gardener and for just the regular person who wants to grow some beautiful things in their garden. But let's talk about the seeds I'm gonna be sowing this month. I'm gonna talk about the seed, I'm gonna show you what varieties I'm doing, and I'm gonna to talk to you about why I'm sowing this seed at this particular time. Now, I've got my calendar set up, and if you haven't watched my garden calendar video, you should, because it shows you how to set up a garden calendar easily and without any guilt or regret, because it allows you to move these little post-it notes around your garden calendar and adjust for your schedule or weather or life. All right, so I've got my calendar, I've got all my seeds as well, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and pull out the ones that we're going to be talking about today. I'm going to be starting with lisianthus and you might have noticed that a lot of other gardeners are starting with lisianthus the reason they're starting with lisianthus is it's because it it's kind of a little high maintenance and it takes a while typically when you sow lisianthus it sprouts and then it just sits there for weeks and weeks and weeks so a lot of gardeners kind of start it earlier so that once down the line and i'm talking it could be two months 10 weeks 12 weeks down the line, we're ready to go. Starting Lysianthus in March might lead to not great results because by the time you get it out there, it's getting too hot and just, so a lot of gardeners start Lysianthus right off the bat. This year I'm growing two varieties, one Lysianthus Magic Apricot, um, and then the other is Lysianthus Mariachi Lavender. And I'm gonna be growing both of these. I actually did some germination of these as hardy annuals back in the fall, and I already have some planted out in my hoop house outside. So hopefully I'm gonna get some early um, blooms from that come this spring. While we're on the topic of flowers with Lysianthus, let me tell you about some of the other ones I'm gonna be doing indoor sowing with. I'm going to be working on um, my foxglove at this point in time. This is a great time of year to work on foxglove. You need to remember that most foxglove bloom every other year. They're biennials. So the first year they'll grow a beautiful green plant and then the second year they will create a flower stalk and then the next year they'll, they're gone. They're dead. You start over. So they are 
technically an annual, they're just a buy-in annual. This year I'm gonna be growing the Camelot Cream um, series. I've already started some of those as hardy annuals. They're already out in the garden. And then I'm gonna to be doing a second round inside. And so I don't expect much production out of these for the first year, but next year they should be absolutely stunning. Remember, if you like something like foxglove, which is a biennial, you want to plant every year. That way, after that first initial start of the year, on that second year, you'll have flower after flower after flower. So you'll have flower the second year, the third year, the fourth year, because you're constantly starting another round of seeds, even though it's a biennial. The next seed I'm gonna be starting is columbine. Columbine typically is a perennial in my particular area. I've actually not really been a huge fan of columbine in the past. I find the stems of the blooms a little too just weak. Um, and so that's, that's is a struggle for me when I'm designing in um, floral designs and things along those lines. I'm actually not a huge fan of the way the blooms look. However, I did find this particular variety called the Blue Star Columbine, and I think I really, really like the look of it. I like how it's got these like double blooms, and it's supposed to be great for cut flowers, so I'm really looking forward to getting those started as well. The reason I'm starting something like a Columbine, which is a perennial, is I want to get it started, and then I want to get it into a large larger pot and allow it to become a larger plant before I actually put it out into the garden. So starting it in January, sowing it indoors, and then moving it out to my hoop house, which is warmer, and allowing it the time to grow and get fuller before I actually plant it in my garden, I think will give me a higher success and a better looking um, plant earlier on. I'm also gonna be um, planting a variety of stalks, and that is a um, new bloom for me for planting and working from seed this year. I don't have those seeds in yet. They're ordered from Baker's Creek, but once those come in, I will show you guys um, the seed haul that I'm gonna be doing for that. Stock is a wonderful fragrant, just, oh my gosh, it smells amazing, so fresh and beautiful. It's a wonderful flower for cut flower gardens. Um, it kind of works more as an annual in my area. It can be used as a hardy annual as well, but um, it's definitely worth focusing on. You can buy some stock varieties at the um, big box stores. However, they tend to be shorter. So the varieties that I've ordered and we'll be working with and that I'll be showing you in a future video are ones that have longer stems and will give me a better um, boost for bloom, a uh, boost of blooms. The reason I'm starting stock this month is because it's a great early spring bloom. So if I start it in January, the plants will be ready to go by the time I have warmer weather and I'll get an earlier production of flowers in the spring. One of my favorite early spring blooms is snapdragons. Now, I started a whole bunch of them as hardy annuals out in the fall and they're doing great outside in my hoop house and I am covering them up for um, the colder weather. This year I'm growing the Potomac Mix, which is a variety of beautiful blooms with very long stems and they just keep producing, producing, producing. In the summer they will die back a little bit and then they'll give you a whole nother round in the fall. I love starting snaps so early because they're just such a riot of color first thing in the spring. I've also had some really great success, success with the Potomac Yellow um, already at this point in the year. Actually, it was earlier on in the year. Now they're all kind of going to bed for the winter. And then I'm also growing Costa Silver, which is a beautiful kind of white pinkish color. And I'm also growing Madame Butterfly Ivory. Um, I've also got a night and day Snapdragon that I'm growing, but I'm actually not real happy with it. The stems aren't long enough. So I'm not sure how much longer that it's gonna last in my garden. I'll probably give it to March and see how it looks. If it doesn't look good, it's coming out. I really want these long, beautiful stems so that I can do floral arranging with them. And the last seed that I'm gonna be starting this month are delphiniums. I typically grow a variety of delphiniums. I had a lot of success with them last year. And um, this year, I'm gonna be focusing on a particular one called um, Astolot. It's kind of a pinkish, purplish, mauvey kind of bloom, and I really like that color. Um, typically, delphinium for me is an annual. For some people in my area, they utilize it as um, a perennial type. It's really not necessarily a perennial. It's that the delphinium drops its seeds, and those seeds, they reseed themselves for the next year. I have not had that level of success with reseeding from delphinium, so I do start mine every year. Um, I do have a couple other varieties that I'm going to be starting, but those have not arrived as of yet. So once those seeds are in, I'll show you that seed haul as well. 
The reason I start delphinium early is because it doesn't like heat. So as soon as the heat comes through, it tends to die back. So it is more of an earlier spring bloom and it does take a while to germinate and to start growing and sprout and be ready to go. So typically I like to start it in January so that come March, I am ready to go and put it out in the garden. Now you might be asking, why does Amanda keep saying come March, come March, come March? Well, in my particular area, and that's zone 8A in Wiley, Texas, so that's the Dallas-Fort Worth area of Texas. In my particular area, that's when our last frost occurs. And so it's our last frost, or last freeze time, and so that's typically around the time when I can start putting flowers out. If I'm feeling very bold, I might put them out earlier in March, but I do need to, if I'm gonna put them out earlier in March, I need to have plans to cover them up if we have any potential freezes or frost coming through. Now, we have had freezes and frost as late as April. I'm bolder, and so that's why I tend to plant sometime in March because I am willing to put in the legwork to cover things up should we have a freeze. But you also need to prepare yourself that if we have a tough freeze, you might lose everything. So gardening is such a gamble sometimes, which I guess is kind of fun, um, but also sad, <laughs> especially when you lose. And that's typically what we're dealing with the frost and freeze situations. Are we gambling how early we can get things out and how late we can get things out? The earlier you can get them out, the better product you're gonna end up having. The later you get, get them out, you might be safer. However, you might not get as many blooms because the heat will come on not far after. So those are the flowers that I'm gonna be sowing indoors in January, but let me talk to you about a few other things that are vegetables, herbs, that type of thing that I'm also gonna be sowing and prepping for the new season. First is a variety of basils. I like basil not for just its culinary use, which of course I love it for its culinary use, but I also like to utilize it as a cut flower greenery in my arrangements. They do grow beautiful blooms, but they also have a beautiful fragrance and vivid colors. And so let me show you some of the seeds I'm gonna be producing this year. I'm gonna do, be doing purple ruffles basil. I actually grew that two years ago and absolutely loved it. Last year I grew dark opal um, basil and nah, it's a dark purple basil. It just didn't give me the level of product that the ruffles, um, the purple ruffle basil did. So I'm gonna be going back to the purple ruffle basil and sowing that this year. And I'm gonna sow quite a bit of it. Um, I loved it last year. I wanna use, a, or two years ago, I wanna use a lot of it. And then I do hope to give some of these away. My mom loves basil. A lot of my neighbors love basil. And so this is an easy plant that has really great germination. And I can actually share these with the people that I love. I'm also gonna be growing cinnamon basil. I grew that this year. I loved it for its long stems, its long, thin, petite leaves, and of course its fragrance. It has a cinnamon smell to it, and it was lovely in all of my um, centerpieces that I used it for. And then the last basil I'm going to be growing is sweet Thai basil. I loved it as well. It was a big producer, especially when the heat really hit. It did really, really great, and I was able to use it pretty much throughout the entire year. So I grew both of those from seed last year, and so I look forward to growing those from seed this year too. Now I'm going to be growing a couple of varieties of tomatoes. As you guys know, I'm mainly a flower gardener, but I do grow some vegetables, herbs, and things along the side just because I love the look of them, but also my husband loves fresh tomatoes. We had a lot of success with Roma, Sweet 100s, and another one that I can't think of, but I'll put it on the screen. It's a little yellow kind of um, mini tomato. It's beautiful. Um, and it was really great. We had a really great success with those last year. So I'm going to try some new ones. This one just this year, just for fun. I'm going to be growing um, purple bumblebee to tomato, and it's kind of a um, cherry tomato, but maybe a little bit larger. And it's kind of got like red tones with green and purple streaks through it. It's really, really beautiful. Um, I believe it's an indeterminate. Yes, it's an indeterminate. It's described as one and a half inch fruits, high acidity, makes it tangy and less sweet flavor, which I'm actually really kind of like a little bit of a less sweet flavor, especially if I'm gonna utilize it in salads and things along those lines. So I'm looking forward to growing those. I am gonna try to grow those over a large trellis this year, so we'll see how that goes. The other tomatoes that I'm growing, um, they have not showed up. Those seeds have not arrived yet, but I am supposed to get those in the next week or so, so I'll do a seed haul and show you what I got from Baker's Creek. 
And the last kind of edible um, that I'm gonna be growing this year or starting this month, the seeds I'm gonna be starting this month are hot peppers, jalapeno peppers. These are an early variety. I get these from Burpee. They're very successful and I have a lot of luck with them each year. And I am from Texas and I do love Southwest food. Um, I love Mexican food. And so this is something that I utilize quite frequently in chilies and different uh, salsas, sometimes on salads. They're even great fried and stuff. So I I love jalapenos. I find that they're easy to grow. And the reason I start my tomatoes and my hot peppers early is so that I can get them started inside. I can move them to my hoop house where it's a little cool, but not too much. Still keep them fairly warm. And then once we are done with the cool weather, I can get them outside immediately and I can get a high production of them. I will grow a lot of um, seedlings from this. And sometimes I if I'm unsure, I might move half my seedlings down to the hoop house and keep half of them inside. And that way, if something happens out in the hoop house or outside, um, and I don't lose everything, right? And so sometimes I might do that, like I might do 10, 10 seedlings of the tomatoes, move five outside, and then if my luck doesn't go well in March and we get some kind of freeze or frost or something and those are taken out, then I can still have my backup seedlings inside. And I think that's easier for someone like a home gardener where we're we're not producing hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of seedlings where we're, we're literally working with 10 <laughs> you know and so it's way easier for me to be like yeah I'm gonna put those outside and I'll keep the rest inside and see how it all works out so sometimes I'll double down on my bet like that you know I'll just make sure that I've got you know a good bet going outside but also I got a backup bet inside just in case it doesn't work out with the weather okay Forgot one more. I'm also gonna be planting beans this year. This will be the first year I'm planting beans and I'm literally planting them because they're pretty. I'm, I'm not gonna lie, just gonna be straight up with you. I'm planting these beans because they're beautiful. They are cranberry beans. The outside of the bean pod is a beautiful cranberry, um, kind of variegated with white cream. Oh my gosh, they're just absolutely beautiful. I'm also hoping they taste really well too. <laughs> if they taste well, that's great. Um, I'll be end up saving those beans, especially for a lot of chilies and a lot of tortilla soup I produce throughout the year for my family. We're big soup people, soup chili people. And so hopefully these will taste great too, but they'll also look beautiful and growing over my trellises outside. So I'm excited to try beans for the first time as well. Okay, so those are the seeds I'm gonna be sowing for the month of January. There's probably gonna be some additional ones as I continue going through my seeds and making plans. Whenever I'm planning out what seeds I'm gonna be doing, I like to have all of my seeds pulled out, I like to have my calendar pulled out, and I like to have access to um, Google, social media, that type of thing. I like to go look up my favorite gardeners, see what they're planting. I like to follow some of my favorite people on Instagram, specifically the Dallas Garden School. She's really, really great about showing what's good to plant that particular month or even that particular week. So she's a great person to look up on Instagram if you're local to my area. Even if you're not local, she has a lot of, lot of, lot of good information. So if you're zone seven, zone nine, you can probably fudge off of what she's doing for this local um, area as well. But I like to have all of that information and then I like to plan from there. I try not to be willy-nilly about what seeds. I'm like, oh, let's just do this right now. I try to really think about it. I try to look at my last frost day. I try to, you know, look at what I've done in the past and what I've been able to get away with, which I've been able to get away with a lot of things, planting a lot of things in March, whereas sometimes we don't have a frost until April. So, it kind of just depends on your situation and how brave you're feeling. But once you gather all that information, it allows you to be really successful with your seed sowing, whether you're working indoors or whether you're working outdoors. If you have questions about sowing particular seeds, make sure to drop me a comment below. Make sure I know your zone, whether you're um, a USDA zone or a different zone without the um, throughout the world let me know and I can help you research and figure those things out if I don't know them off the top of my head. I'm excited. I love seed production. It amazes me after all of these years as a gardener um, how fascinated I am with this tiny little seed growing into this big beautiful plant and I'm always fascinated by this miracle of the seed turning into a little tiny seedling with these beautiful cute little leaves. Every year, I'm just drawn to it. I'm obsessed with it. As soon as I start sowing seeds, I check my seeds every day. And that pure joy, once you see that green start to peek out, is just 
absolutely amazing. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope you guys really enjoyed this new series. It'll be at the beginning of every month talking about what seeds I'm sowing either indoors or direct sowing outdoors. As always, she's a mad gardener or a decorator or anything else that she wants to be. Thanks, y'all.